Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're ascending to the persistent skies of low-level surveillance with the Tethered Aerostat Radar System, or TARS, the enduring Aerostat-borne surveillance system that's been a quiet guardian of US borders and airspace since the late 1970s, using helium-filled moored balloons as elevated radar platforms to detect low-flying aircraft, surface vessels, and ground threats across vast sectors with a range exceeding 370 kilometers, all while providing cost-effective 24-7 monitoring for drug interdiction, air sovereignty and homeland defense amid evolving threats from drones to smuggling routes. If you're an aviation tech enthusiast, a border security analyst, or simply fascinated by the fusion of lighter-than-air engineering, phased array radars and modular payloads that turns a simple blimp into a floating watchtower capable of scanning 200,000 square miles without a single pilot or fuel burn, you're in for a comprehensive and high-altitude exploration. TARS isn't just a relic of Cold War ingenuity. It's a network of eight strategic class aerostats operated by US Customs and Border Protection since fiscal year 2014, featuring Lockheed Martin's L-88 surveillance radar on TCOM. 420k envelopes that hover at up to 15,000 feet, tethered by high-strength cables to ground winches for rapid ascent and descent enabling seamless handoffs to fighters or interceptors while integrating with the Air and Marine Operations Center for fused tracks across North America. From its origins in the Air Force's 1978 balloon-borne experiments to its pivotal role in Operations Hattrick and TV Marty broadcasts into Cuba, this system has evolved through interagency handoffs from Coast Guard to DOD to CBP, incorporating gallium nitride electronics for enhanced jamming resistance and carbon composite reinforcements for wind tolerance up to 60 knots, making it a versatile asset for scenarios from Gulf of Mexico, narco flights to Caribbean migrant interdictions. We'll unpack its remarkable capabilities in exhaustive detail, provide a thorough technical overview grounded in the latest operational assessments from CBP and the Air Force's 84th Radar Evaluation Squadron, discuss its critical strategic role in US layered defense and international partnerships, incorporate some intriguing fun facts to enrich the narrative, and conclude with the latest factual developments as of November 4, 2025, including recent optimizations and expansions in Puerto Rico. So, inflate the envelope, spool the winch, and let's rise to station keep for everything you need to know about the TARS Aerostat Born Surveillance System. The TARS system's capabilities elevate it to the apex of persistent, low-level airborne surveillance, engineered as a multi-mission radar sentinel to dominate border and coastal domains with a synergistic mix of elevation persistence, wide area coverage, and seamless data fusion, allowing it to penetrate smuggling corridors or low-altitude incursions, maintain 360-degree airspace vigilance through rotating arrays and cue kinetic responses like F-16 scrambles or Coast Guard cutters with time to alert under 30 seconds, rivaling ground radars while offering unlimited endurance, minus weather downtime, for theaters spanning the southwest border to the Florida Straits. At its core, TARS excels in airborne early warning, buoyed by helium-filled envelopes that achieve operational altitudes of 10,000 to 15,000 feet via electro-optical ballonet controls for shape stability, providing a radar horizon exceeding 200 nautical miles and outpacing mobile towers like the AN-TPS-78 in deployment speed with ground handling crews raising platforms in under an hour, giving it the persistence to monitor sectors up to 200,000 square miles continuously. Its detection prowess stems from the Lockheed Martin L-88 X-band radar, with gallium nitride transmit-receive modules scanning up to 370 kilometers for low observable targets like narco subs or ultralights, fused with an infrared search and track sensor for passive heat signature locks that cue without emissions, maintaining a low ground footprint through tethered nylon cables rated for 2,000 pounds tension to withstand gusts up to 60 knots. For integrated ops, TARS feeds into the AMOX Air and Marine Operation Surveillance System, correlating with 700 sensor streams to track 50,000 aircraft simultaneously across the Americas, with a surveillance envelope extendable via networked sites, allowing handoffs from Yuma, Arizona to Kujo Key, Florida, 
for seamless coverage over the Gulf of Mexico or Caribbean approaches. Its electronic support measures suite, equipped with digital radio frequency memory analyzers, can geolocate illicit emitters like pirate VHF at 150 kilometers or spoof drone controllers during interdictions, and the ground control station, with wide area displays and helmet-mounted queuing, overlays augmented reality tracks from the distributed sensor net of electro-optical cameras, providing spherical horizon views for off-bore site nominations, enabling a minimal crew of technicians to manage complex taskings like simultaneous air and surface vectors. The system's aerodynamic fins and cable stabilizers allow station keeping in winds up to 50 knots without drift exceeding 100 meters. This multifaceted persistence makes TARS a true domain enforcer, capable of leading interdiction webs to seal smuggling vectors, escorting migrant patrols for real-time queues, or conducting independent sovereignty watches with synthetic aperture modes mapping vessel wakes at one meter resolution through haze, ensuring it remains a cornerstone of US aerial border strategy well into the 2030s. To fully appreciate TARS's engineering mastery, let's examine its technical specifications and operational dynamics, as TCOM and Lockheed Martin's collaborative blueprint is a sophisticated synthesis of lighter-than-air buoyancy and radar sophistication, yielding an aerostat that's as stable as it is soaring, with the 420K model featuring a 120,000 cubic foot envelope filled with 85% helium for a gross lift of 12,000 pounds at sea level, tethered by a 0.8 inch Dyneema cable spooled on a 4,000 pound capacity winch for ascents to 15,000 feet in 20 minutes. The envelope's multi-lobed polyurethane coated nylon fabric with internal ballonet, adjusting air volume via blowers to counter pressure changes, reduces helium loss to under 1% daily while achieving aerodynamic stability with swept-back fins and cable attachments deflecting shear forces. And the gondola's reinforced aluminum frame houses the L-88 radar with 1,280 gallium nitride modules for interleaved air and surface search modes up to 370 kilometers, integrated with a distributed electro-optical suite of four infrared visible cameras for spherical tracking up to 50 kilometers. The ground station's hardened shelter with voice-activated consoles and helmet-mounted displays enables off-bore site queuing, where operators designate tracks by gazing at feeds. Payload bays accommodate the radar pallet with 200 nautical mile envelopes or auxiliary sensors like SIGINT pods for emitter hunts, with tether extensions adding up to two more for four total feeds, including weather radars for storm avoidance, and the self-protection includes lightning rods and static dissipators to counter strikes. Operationally, TARS's flow is a seamless blend of inflate and intercept. Technicians at a site like Marfa, Texas, winch the envelope skyward, the radar spins up for sector sweeps at 10,000 feet, locks low flyers at 200 nautical miles with the array, cues AMOC for handoff from the console, then reels in for maintenance while the optics provide horizon vigilance all within an indefinite endurance envelope linking border towers to Caribbean outposts, making it a strategic asset for persistent domain awareness in expansive frontiers. The TAR system's strategic role is profoundly influential in US homeland defense architecture, serving as the low altitude layer of the integrated air and missile defense network to secure sovereignty and interdiction in regional hotspots, particularly along the southwest border or Florida Straits where its elevated radars and fused feeds enable it to challenge illicit aviation from standoff envelopes, integrating with P-8A Poseidons and F-16s for kill chains that amplify limited assets against massed low-tech threats. As CBP sustains eight sites through fiscal 2025, it bolsters the Air and Marine Operations Center's common operating picture, escorting Joint Interagency Task Force South for narco hunts or coordinating with NORAD for continental air defense, while tactical spin-offs like PTDS extend its reach to forward bases in Ukraine proxies. Fun fact, one TARS site at Kudjo Key, Florida, doubles as a TV Marty transmitter, beaming US broadcasts into Cuba since 1993 for psychological ops. Another intriguing tidbit, the 420K envelope's shape mimics a flying saucer for wind resistance, allowing ops in hurricanes up to Category 2 without deflation.
As of November 4, 2025, TARS continues to evolve with the 84th Radar Evaluation Squadron's recent optimization analysis delivered to CBP on October 29th, enhancing signal processing for drone detection amid rising border UAV incursions, building on the Puerto Rico site's relaunch in Lajas for Caribbean coverage. Yesterday's CBP brief confirmed seven active sites along the southwest border and one in Puerto Rico, with helium sustainment contracts renewed for fiscal 2026 to counter global shortages, while trials integrate AI for automated track classification. Challenges like wind-induced downtime persist, but with over 40 years of service and expansions eyed for the northern border, TARS is reaffirming its status as America's tethered eye in the sky. C. The tethered aerostat radar system is a buoyant bastion of border vigilance, blending lift, longevity, and lookup to watch the unwatched. What are your thoughts on TARS? Impressed by its 370-kilometer gaze, excited for drone upgrades, or curious about its TV Marty side gig? Share your insights in the comments below. Give this video a like. If it floated your boat, share it with your surveillance squad. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more deep dives into the system scanning our skies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.